So we want to run this AP prop. We want to get used to seeing this. And this is really common in the nine calculator section. They want to know that you can do a put differentiation. They actually gave the answer on the sheet, all right, which you can look up on the internet. That is 3y minus 2x over 8y minus 3x. So we're just going to start working this problem. Everybody, it's really important, I think, that you do not write dx. So it's 2x. I understand that it's dx, but we divide by dx immediately. The next term is 8y dy, but dy divided by dx is y prime. On the other side, the derivative of 7 is 0. And then we have a product rule. All right? I will treat 3x as f, and I will treat y as g. I always do f first. The derivative of 3x is 3. dx, and then the y. I don't write the dx. Plus 3x is the f, so that just gets written. The derivative of y is 1 dy divided by dx, y prime. We have to sort. In this case, since the AP test says show, you don't want to skip step. All right? And because of the way it's written on the AP test, knowing that you have to get it to look like this, this is the bottom step. This is what, it'll, you know, this is what our derivative is going to have to look like. I see that I want 2x to be negative here. Do you guys see this? So I want to send 2x to the other side, and I want to send this to this side. So the step I write in green then is 8y, y prime, minus 3x, y prime, equals 3y, minus 2x. And then finally, because on the AP test, guys, I am working to show, I probably show this step just to make sure they understand I understand. And then I would write the derivative here that we had in red. And that shows, if, and again, if I go back to, all right, that is the AP problem. AP problems are scored on nine points. All right, every problem like this is worth nine points. They gave one point for this step right here, if you had it correct. And then they had to show the solving to one y prime. So this first part was two points. That means there's seven left for parts B and C. Okay? The one of the reasons I think on the AP they give you the derivative is they want to make sure even if you made a math mistake, you could get part B and C. Okay? So we're going to go to part B. And part B says, show there is a point P with an X coordinate of three, which is tangent, line tangent to the curve at P is horizontal. Find the y coordinate of p. All right. So that's mouthful, all right? And again, if you want to have a copy of this, just look on the internet. So there's a point p with an x coordinate of 3. You guys agree that this point is 3 comma y? At which the line tangent to the curve at p is horizontal. And that's the hard part. So at some point P, tangent lines, and I don't know what the curve looks like. Don't particularly care. But the tangent line works out, which means the derivative is zero. So I would write dy dx at point P equals zero. And I probably wouldn't even have, I wouldn't sketch this. That's just so we can make sure we see it. Well, that's pretty cool because I know at least the x coordinate, and I know from part A the derivative they gave us. So I would say 0 equals 3y minus 2x over 8y minus 3x. And I know the x coordinate is 3. So I get 3y minus 6 over 8y minus 9. You guys agree? All right. Believe it or not, some of the biggest errors in the AP right now, and even for us in our class, is understanding how to solve this. Guys, if I'm going to make this 0, I only care about making the numerator. Zero. So what makes the numerator zero? Two. Y equals two. So our point P is three, two. Now you think that's the answer. But remember, we gotta do one more thing here, okay? Because we're not 
this, we know this is what it solves to, but my question is, does 3, 2 exist on the curve? i got to go all the way back to the original function here. And I want to make sure that 3, 2 goes on the curve. Check an original curve. Okay? So I would just do that by writing it out. 3 squared plus 4 times 2 squared equals 7 plus 3 times 3 times 2. All right? You guys see it's 18 plus, you see it's 25 on the right? And I can see now, you guys agree it's 9 plus 16 on the left? Right there. So it's 25 equals 25. Part B, the point is 3 comma 2. So find the y according to P. 2. All right? Now, if you've taken the AP test, this is going to be interesting. There are three points here. Believe it or not, one of them is just doing this. You, if you get nothing out as long as you wrote that, you'd get a point. And for raw scores, I always joke, 66% is all you need. All right? So these points are important. The other thing is that you showed solving this to zero, okay, for Y2. That, you know, that two didn't just fall out. And the third point was to check that it, that it worked in the original curve. So two points for the first section. Three points for the next one. Guess what? Part C is worth four points. So at this point, you haven't quite done enough work to fix your problem for trying to pass the AP. All right? We're going to group all this. Whoa. I'm going to group all this so we can make some room for part C. And again, this is just us getting used to practicing them. Part C says... Find the value of the second derivative at point P for point P. They want they want you to find this value. Alright? And then they ask, does the curve have a max, a min, or neither at P? And you guys find your answer. We'll do that second. But they're asking us to find the value for this. Alright, everybody, guess what we gotta do then? we got to take the second derivative. And we this is hard, right? This is something that takes a lot of practice. So I go back up, and from A, I got the first derivative, right? They gave it to us. We have to take the second derivative of that. So I'm going to give myself some space, but this is going to take some room. And everybody, they don't want, they're not particularly interested in the second derivative. They want the value, right? And we know point P from part B. Is three two, okay. I see a quotient rule, right? Everybody, what's the derivative of y prime on the left side here? The derivative of y prime is y prime prime, all right, or the second derivative. So here's this. Now we have to do what? We have to do the quotient rule. All right, the derivative of the numerator is. 3y prime, because the derivative of 3y is 3, what's the derivative of 2x? Negative 2, yep, times the bottom, minus, I'm going to have to make a little space here, minus the top, 3y minus 2x, times the derivative of the bottom, the derivative of the bottom is, what's the derivative of 8y? 8y prime. Minus the derivative of 3x is just 3, all over the bottom squared. Now, one of the big mistakes that happen for people who don't do enough prep for the AP is they start to think, well, I'll have to substitute y prime, all this crap, here, not there, there and there, right? Because there's y prime. We're not going to do that. Did it ask us to find the second derivative? No, it asks you to find the value. And everybody, what do you know about, for part B, what do we know about dy dx at this point? Remember we said it had a horizontal line. It's zero. Guys, y prime is zero from part B. Right? It was a horizontal line. So this goes to zero. 
that goes to zero. What else do I know? Well, I know point P. Do I need to simplify this disaster? No, I don't want to. I'm going to write negative 2, and then I'm going to make sure that I plug in the right value. That's my number one mistake. Oh, I like what's happening on the second term. You guys catching this? All over, and the bottom is 8 times 3 minus, or 8 times 2, sorry, minus 3 times 3. All right, if I did it right, I think I did. You guys catch that this goes to 0? All right, and then I have negative 2 times 16 minus 9 is 7. 16 minus 9 is also 7 again squared, but what happens when the 7 is going to cancel? So what's the value of my second derivative? Negative 2, 7. Okay, got to go the other way, 75%. So here we are. I've done all this work, and I've proven the value is negative 2, 7. The million dollar question justify and tell me is this a min? A max, all right, part B was, does the curve have a local max, a local min, or neither at P? And justify it. It's always justify. So here we are. We go, hey, d, y, d squared, y, dx squared is negative 2, 7. All right, everybody, this screams second derivative rule. Remember the second derivative rule. When the first derivative is 0 and the second derivative is negative, you get a local max. So you can write then by second derivative rule. And you should spell out derivative, but I'm lazy. By second derivative rule, since y prime equals zero and y prime prime is less than zero, point P is Local max. All right, this is worth four points. We knew that. Let's score it up. If I go to 100%, or gonna have to go a little smaller. Well, I can fit it. I think if I just move it yeah, right there. So the scoring here on this one, guys, was did you have this on the paper someplace? That's two points. Not simplified, but there, and I got it. The next thing is the value of negative two sevenths. That was a point. The last point was for the reason. And it says exactly here on the answer sheet, since y prime is zero, y prime prime is less than zero at p, the curve has a local max at p. So they didn't even say second derivative rule, but obviously I have exactly the same. So this was the point. And again, you get a feel for when we start practicing these problems, how much space they're going to take. In my class, in a week, we'll do five, right? One a day. One a day is plenty of work. All right? Our goal would be 66% of the points. All right, initially. That would be a great goal. All right? Keep practicing.